have finished our stay in Nashville, Tennessee. And so we are now taking everything that was in the Airbnb and putting it back in the van. There are some things obviously that we don't need in the Airbnb, so it just stays in the van. But like clothes, anything like food that we might want to eat or uh, bathroom stuff, like all of that stuff comes with us in the Airbnb. And then we obviously have to bring it back out before we leave. There is our Yeti cooler. We usually don't bring that in. That's just uh, holds like cold drinks and stuff. That is our outdoor table and then some solar panels for the generator. And then we just have a, uh, we have these felt bags that kind of fit within the uh, con um, compartments of the van. And those kind of hold nicks and knacks and just wires and stuff. It's kind of a mess right now. All right. I'm going to stop the video here because that is just so incredibly embarrassing. The van was so, so messy and we got to a point where we couldn't handle it anymore. And just every time that we stopped somewhere, we'd have to move everything from the back of the van to the front of the van. And then any time that we left somewhere, we had to move it from the front of the van to the back of the van. And it was just way too much stuff. And we learned that a lot of it we just didn't need or we weren't using it and so why are we carrying this around especially when we have such limited space and so we figured this would be a great opportunity to just take everything out of the van go through it and then just reassess whether or not it was important and anything that we didn't need we would just put it in a box and ship it back to our house along with learning what it is that we did or didn't need I wanted to share some things some learning van life learnings that we have um, that we've been forced to learn uh, at least on the first half of the trip so the first thing I want to say is the overall theme is that patience is a virtue you're gonna get bumps and bruises and you're it's just if you go 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 the whole time you're gonna get burnt out and we learned that when we were traveling from California to Colorado because it was getting to be 130 degrees in the desert, we wanted to just get out of there as soon as possible. And although it was necessary that we did it, just being on the go so quickly in such a large van really made it difficult. I think, <clears throat> I think we've hit rock bottom. <laughs> and it's so hot. Even when the AC is on, I just don't think I want to do this anymore. I just want to go home. It's kind of funny though. <laughs> Van life is hard and it's really hard to transition from living in a house to living in a van and staying in a different location every night or every other night. It's it kind of wears on you a little bit because you just are constantly on the go and although it's adventurous and although it's really fun it's also really important to make sure that you're planning your food your water your stays your locations um, if you're going to be going to a national forest or a national park make sure that you have the the right you paid for passes in advance uh, make sure that you have places to stay whether if, even if you're boondocking, know where you're going to go so that you have a destination to go to. For water, you have two different types of water. You have your general water usage and then your, general, or then your drinking water. The Winnebago Rebel holds about 21 gallons of water in its tank. And we can usually go about four to five days on that. That means washing dishes, taking showers, um, using it to flush the toilet, washing hands and brushing teeth, stuff like that. But drinking water, we have two eight-gallon jugs, and we don't skimp on that. Usually that will uh, last us about two, three days, depending on how hot it is. And that is between Greg, myself, and our two dogs, Shelby and Sookie. The next thing I'm going to talk about is a little different. It's something that I struggled with pretty bad at the beginning. I still kind of struggle with it. Um, if you're not a super social person or you don't really enjoy having conversations with people you don't know, <laughs> having the Winnebago Revel makes that extremely difficult. If you're parked anywhere, it really is this 
invitation for people to come up to you and ask you really personal questions. Um, for instance, like they'll ask things like, how are you affording this? How much was it? Um, can I look inside? Can I climb up on the ladder? How much? When did we get it? Where are we from? Where do we live? When people see the van, they see it as an oddity and they see it as an opportunity to, to see something in real life. They don't really see it as your home. Uh, they, they don't really see it as your personal or safe space. They see it as this really cool thing that they've ne they're probably once in a lifetime situate, you know, be able to look at. So I try to remember that and, and think about how it brings people joy rather than, wow, some rando is just walking in my home right now. So that's something to think about if you're going to be getting the Winnebago Rebel. On the same topic of getting or buying a, a camper van, for me personally, it was so important to have a personal toilet. That was my number one request. But I also learned that having a shower wasn't quite as important. We do have hot water um, and we have a hookup either in the shower in the van or through the back of the van. And I have not once in the few months that we've owned this van used the shower inside the van. The other thing that's super important about uh, getting van life is having an AC or a heating unit. Science is real. Climate change is real. We're getting hotter and more extreme weather. So keeping that in mind as you live in this big box, it's either an ice box or an oven. The last thing I'm going to talk about is for those who are working on the road. We are very fortunate where we can work on the road, where we can work while we travel. We wouldn't be able to do that if we didn't have Wi-Fi services, like multiple Wi-Fi services. So we signed up for both AT&T and Verizon and we have hotspots that we can turn off and on depending on which one is better service in that area. When we were in the Grand Canyon, Verizon had the best service. It was the only service out there. When we were in Kansas, AT&T, 5G all the way. When we were in Colorado, neither Verizon nor AT&T were solid services. It was actually T-Mobile, which of course we didn't have, but it's it was good to have both of those services for working and making sure that we were available when we needed to be for work. So that is about it for the first half journey of van life learnings. I am so glad that we have reduced to only the necessities and I will in another video show how much cleaner our van is. <laughs> and how less embarrassing that is. But for now, we will get back to this video and we'll do another one showing you what it, how it looks cleaned up. Greg got some lottery tickets, and so we're in the seat and we're gonna scratch them. You scratch off the collar, collar cards at the bottom and then it's like bingo where you have to match it up top. Just need the arrows or the drum or the musician. Yes, last one. Da 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 da. The rooster. The bell. I got the bell. All right, there's one. Shrimp. The boot. Hey, I got a free ticket. I'll go get my free ticket. You wanna go get in there and get your free ticket? Why not? The arrows. I got a free ticket. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> Another free ticket. <laughs> and it goes on. The cello. <laughs> we didn't get it. Ah. <laughs> so close. That's the end of our lottery career. Uh, apparently we're sharing a seat. What do you think, huh? Are we sharing?
We've made it to our campground. It gives me such anxiety to have a fire going outside. Living in California, you're constantly told no fires, no fires, no fires. And then of course, we have a house fire. Uh, but it's really nice. It's, I love the smell. Um, I like the sound of it and it keeps the mosquitoes at bay. So I'm all about it, but it does, does give me a little anxiety. <laughs> dogs have been put to bed, we've cleaned up, we've closed up, we've locked the van, uh, we have our AC set on auto, it'll take about 20% of the battery, uh, and it's about, what time is it? 10.30. It's about 10.30, and we're gonna read for a little bit, and then go to bed.